So what we'll do is we'll form, we'll put some clay, like just wet clay, like paint. So I just put a bit of water in the clay and paint the wood. And then we'll make a nice big border the whole way around with the cup. So we'll just make a thick border around the perimeter. And then that will hold our sand and our bottles, which will be our insulation layer. Although I just saw over there that there's um, some styrofoam in the recycling that's going to be chucked out. So I might see if we can use that, then that's better than it going to landfill. So I'll see if we can, if it's strong enough and rigid enough to put it under the bricks. Um, yeah, and then we're going to build it up, get it all nice and level. So we'll use the level, we'll put some sand over the top, and then we'll lay the bricks in the sand. That will form our base of the oven. And then we'll draw, find the center point, draw our circle, and start to build our sandcastle on top of that. Um, let me just go check that styrofoam if you guys want to keep mixing it in the top. I'm going to move it back to the rest of the That's all right. Oh, is that what you're doing? Getting a little bit crumbly. That's still pretty strong. If it just gets mixed around quite well, I think it will be okay. If you keep doing your breeders, it's going to make it easier on your feet as well. I'm just trying to work out if we can potentially use it for the rest of the bricks. This part was cob, but it's going to use a lot of cob. If we put the bricks as a per, around the perimeter of this, and we can put some cob down, lay the bricks and that, put cob between them, get our bricklaying skills going, then we'll fill the whole thing with sand and bottles. It might work better. Let's do that. So could someone help me get off all these fire bricks? Um, we can just stack them somewhere. Careful because they chip quite easily. So what we might do now that we've just checked the layout, you're not going to see the bricks so it doesn't matter that they're uneven spacing because eventually the whole thing is going to be rendered. Um, so if we take all this off and just put them down in the ground near where they are, we'll cover the plywood with our clay paint, the whole thing. So we'll just, we might need if someone would get a bucket, yeah, with extra water in it maybe. Extra. So it's a bit more liquidy, like a paint. Well, how is it? Yeah, I think it's a bit thick paint. Because the bricks will get dipped in it as well. I would go half that in another bucket and then top it up with water and give it a mix round. Is that alright? And then we'll cover the whole plywood. So you know She's how I needy, said that, isn't she? <laughs> you know I said that the clay is like glue? So whenever we're touching another surface to cob, we want to be putting a bit of clay slip down because that helps it to bond to the material. So if we just put cob on this brick now and then it dried, tomorrow you just pull off the cob. And if you paint the brick with a bit of clay slip and then put cob on and it dries, it will bond together a bit better. Not Because these bricks are smooth, it's not going to be super tight. But... Top that off the board. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any questions so far? What's going on? Let's do it. So let's take, I think I'm just moving. Can we do it? That way, so it's the same as that size, and let's just make a space now. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, from the outside to the brick for render. Yeah. You can um, ideally what we do when we render is that we come down, we won't worry about the pallets, we're looking at the edge of the plaster. We call it a drip edge. So we want you don't want the plaster to exactly meet the surface below it because then it, water can go inside that material. So what you usually want is a bit of an overhang. So the render mm. sits out and we make a tiny little lip on it so the water will drop off just like a, um, the end of a gutter or something. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm. So some of them are really beautiful, like in a creative cob house you can make curvy drip edges that sort of go around the stone and they look really pretty. Um, mm. And that's what we try to do with the oven as well. So yeah, you can put that straight up to the end of the pile. 
Cool. All right, let's check this out. Thank you for mixing all that. I think that's pretty good. Now it's even a bit sandy. Um, mm. Cover the pie in um, clay, and then we're going to lay a thin a thin layer of cob the whole way, this is going to be wet and covered in clay so we'll do a thin layer of cob the whole way along the perimeter that we can lay our bricks into just so they've got something and the way that you, it's good to lay bricks is put whatever the thickness is there and then that there and then you do it on the second one, the second one you butt them up against each other mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter, uh, we don't need exact spacing because we're not brick layers. And the bricks need to be covered in clay slips. Yeah, just the surface that's going to yeah. get, so it doesn't matter on the outside, but just the surfaces that are going to get a bit. And do you need a rubber mallet? Yes. Please. Let's go, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> She's asleep. She doesn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> And then what we'll do, so that's just going to go under the bricks, and then the inside we'll lay just a thin layer of sand. I think we'll use the more orangey sand over the whole thing. And then we'll lay some glass bottles inside, because you know glass is a good insulator. And then we'll cover that in um, sand on top, and then that's going to be the foundation for our fire bricks and then our oven. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So remember, if you're doing this at home or for someone, if you can get a good base built first, you don't use supply pallets. <coughs> Is that cool? What was the yeah. idea? The, what's ideal? Yeah. My favourite is just stone, like really nice stone. But it's often expensive unless you can lay yourself. And I, um, a friend of mine was building dry stack stone and he had done this beautiful base with no mortar and all the stone was stacked perfectly. But the weight of the oven is so heavy and while you're building it, people are pushing down. And he was running a workshop and <laughs> it was on the first day and everyone was pushing on it and the whole thing mm. collapsed and you just really, you want to get it done professionally or use more Yeah, yeah it was what really it? sad. So then you have to engineer something like this quicker. That's yeah. awesome, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So clay slip, just quickly, you always need this in earth building no matter what you're doing. You need it in lighter, straw bell, cob, and it's just watered down clay. The way that we determine, who's got a clean hand? You got a kind of clean hand. The way you determine that it's thick enough is if you put your hand in, if it's too watery all the way in, <laughs> and then pull it out, it should cover your hand like a latex glove. Wow. So if it's too watery, you'll see skin through it, and if it's too thick, you'll get webs between your fingers. Does that make sense? So, cool. so that looks Perfect. pretty good to me. Does it feel good to you? And that's like the that's nice so consistency of like a clay slip and that's just the paint that you use. You'll always have a bucket, it's just good to wet things down. Because you don't want to wet things down with just water. Cool? So if some people can just you just use your hands or you can use some shrubby brushes and just brush over this. If we were professional we'd have paint brushes, but we don't need those. You can use some grass or some leaves or just a bit of straw if you want. And we want it about a centimetre thick. So use your finger as a gauge of how thick you want it to sit up. Because we don't have form work, you want to use your fingers here, you're using your palm. Mm. So you want to use your fingers as much as you can, rather than palm, because the rougher the better. And use one hand as your form. So you know how if you're pouring a concrete footing or something, you'd use a plywood form. In cob, you use your hand as the form. So if you go... Your hand is the formwork and you push to your hand. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. 